So many of you commented on the first video on this Zenith radio here and told me all the things that I missed and well, it's because I didn't know. I appreciate it so much, all of you commenting and telling me about stuff like this and this thing right here that I completely missed. I thought this was a resistor and I didn't even consider uh, this because I didn't know what it was either. This thing as a result of your comments works a lot better now actually. It sounds better, and I even added a little modification or two to make it even cooler. So stick around, especially if you watched the first video, and check out what I did to make this thing better and safer. Let's start on the outside. I added a fuse holder. Next very interesting thing I did was, if you look up here, it looks a little bit different. This is where the electrostatic tweeters used to attach to the chassis. And you remember they were unplugged? Well, there's probably a reason for that. So I decided to ditch the electrostatic tweeters and add just a single tweeter, which we'll look at later. But what I did is I ran it in parallel with the woofer. So I just ran, you know, negative wire off of the woofer onto this terminal, and then a positive wire onto that terminal. And I'll show you right now what I did. Now, this is not the most glamorous thing I've ever done, but it is definitely functional. So we've got some screws in here that are too long, and it's okay because the holes on this tweeter are actually a little bit smaller than the screw so that the tweeter doesn't move around like at all. It's very solidly in there. And I used just some nuts I had laying around as spacers and put a little dab of super glue on each one to kind of keep it from moving around. And that puts it at the perfect position so it doesn't poke through the uh, fabric on the other side here. See? Like nothing even happened. And then here's one of the old electrostatic tweeters. I just cut the wires right off of it and soldered them onto this tweeter. This thing was just sitting in my junk for the longest time, but there's your part number right there. You can probably throw that in eBay and see if you can find one. So yeah, that'll just plug in right on this uh, terminal strip, just like the old tweeters did. And there's only going to be one of them. I thought one was plenty. On the bottom side here, you can see the selenium rectifier is gone. And in place is two. 100 ohm resistors because in order to get the 125 volts out of this thing that the service manual wanted when I added another 100 ohm resistor to make 50 ohms it worked better so I would have bought a 50 ohm resistor if I had known but you know it is what it is I'll tell you what this thing sounds better now after all of your tips all of your suggestions and uh, I'm going to put this thing back in the case for good now we'll turn it on and we'll see how it sounds Oops. This is very annoying and very unfortunate. I was putting this thing back together and I went to go put the tuning knob on and uh, this happened. It's just spinning. And I was like, oh great, what could that be? And well, the uh, string broke. I don't know how or when this happened, um, but it looks like it broke right at the spring inside of there. So. I guess I get to restring a zenith, but only part of it. This string still works, but I'm not going to touch it too much. Okay, so here's how this works. You've got the string here, you've got this little uh, metal ring on one end, then another metal ring on the other end. And what those metal rings do is they hook into this little spring, and that little spring hooks into a little ear on the back of this pulley can't really see it. The camera's not wanting to behave, but that's how it works. So basically, I'm going to need to remove these rings from this string because I don't have anything quite like that. I'm going to have to make sure the rings are the proper distance apart, which looks like it's going to be 13 and 3 eighths of an inch. And then once I get those rings glued into the new string, 
which here's what I'm using. Um, Piscifun, 150 pound uh, string, I guess. And then just kind of wrap it around this thing and that again. I think it's pretty simple. I think on um, that it's just three rotations and then uh, one rotation about that. Shouldn't be terrible. So I got the rings cleaned up with some acetone. I let it soak in there with acetone and then kind of slowly removed the uh, string bits inside of there with uh, these tools here. And now I've got one end of the new string drying right now. I've got it wrapped around once and that's just kind of covered in super glue. So just waiting for the super glue to cure fully because I can't really do much until that's fully cured. And then I'll just do the same thing over here but I'll have to get an actual measurement correct on that. So then once that's created I'll have the part that can be strung around here and then hooked into place with that spring. I got it. There it is, nice and restrung, and it works just the way it used to. I did have to go back and tighten it, and I did that by just tying an extra knot. Kind of tough to see, but that's what's going on back there. You can see I hooked them both onto the spring, and uh, the spring is pretty well tensioned. And I had to do that, otherwise it would just get kind of stuck going this way. But now it goes all the way. All right. Time to actually assemble this for the last time. Alright, right here is the part where I realized something was very wrong last time, so I'm happy to report. It's uh, working as intended, so that's great. And then we'll do our FM alignment once we turn this on. Man, some of you really did not get that joke in the last video. You really don't think I know that this is not how you do an FM alignment? Come on, I'm not that stupid. Wait for it. And here we are. Saya. Like, how was your bus? <laughs> Man. This thing works very well. So Paul is saying, improv. Right, store performance. Incredible voice. When you hold me, a permanent act in order to save life. Was covered with snow. I owe a big thank you to all of you who commented on this video because without those comments, without that feedback, um, this wouldn't be working as well as it is right now and it wouldn't be as safe as it is right now either. You know, we got rid of all the problem things, the selenium rectifier. They're known to uh, fail in nasty ways, I guess. We've got that bumblebee capacitor out of there, we've got a fuse added. This thing's great. This thing works so well and it sounds even better than it used to. Let me know in the comments if we're going to blow up the output transformer with that little tweeter. And I'll do the FM alignment off camera because I need to listen to copyrighted music for that. So, thank you so much for watching. It's Christmas Day here, so Merry Christmas if you're celebrating. Happy Holidays to everybody else. Whatever you're celebrating, I hope it's wonderful. So, thanks again. I will see you in the next one. I successfully replaced the selenium rectifier in a way where it still makes sound. So one thing I want to check is the voltage. Now I'll tell you when this was on here and I checked the voltage at the uh, filter capacitor I would get about 107 volts and then it would start dropping and the schematic says that the voltage right at this orange wire here is supposed to be 125 DC so uh, let's hook up right here and let's see what we get. 111 DC. So that is higher than we used to have. Um, it worked just fine before. 
at lower than that. I'll do one thing for you all for science. Let's put a resistor in parallel with that one, one just like it, so we can bring the resistance down to 50 ohms, and let's see if we can get the voltage to change. You see, I bought a whole bunch of these, because sometimes when you're on Mauser, it's really worth it to just pay $2 for a 10 of something instead of uh, paying 50 cents for one. So right here, let's see if when I touch this on here, we get a higher voltage. Yeah, so there it is. This is another 100 ohm resistor. When I change this to 50 ohms by putting these resistors here in parallel, um, we get closer to what the schematic says we are supposed to have. So if I really wanted to, I could wire this in in parallel, and then we've got closer to the 125 this thing is looking for on the schematic. So you know, all music is copyrighted on the radio for the most part, and I can't find anything that's for sure not. But I was talking about this resistor earlier, how I've got 100 ohm resistor in series with the diode for replacing the uh, selenium rectifier. I want to show you what I'm hearing, just in static, and I think you'll be able to hear it. So, we saw we we're supposed to get 125 out of the selenium, but we only get 110 with the 100 ohm resistor. So, if we put one in parallel, bring it down to 50 ohms, I want you to hear the difference. So, when I clip this green lead here, we're going in parallel underneath. Just listen to the static, just listen to the difference. Um, What I'm trying to convey is, like, what that translates to is better sounding music. Like, the music sounds way better 